Okay, let's roll right into our post race for today's 28th annual Cheez It 355 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at Watkins Glen International. And our second place finisher is defending series champion Brad Keselowski. He drove the number two Miller Lite Ford for Penske Racing. And Brad, I know you wanted that win awfully bad. Just talk about uh, uh, how things were going out there this afternoon for the number two Ford. It was a strong day, absolutely. We had a shot at winning at the end, which uh, sure was a lot of fun and uh, fun, and uh, came up, uh, you know, short. Uh, so three years in a row in second, that, that kind of stinks. But proud of the effort, proud of the recovery, because I dug us a deep hole uh, very early in the race, trying to pass uh, McMurray, and I, I lost control and uh, about knocked our race out right there and, and finished our car off. But uh, uh, good recovery and uh, great positioning at the end. Just uh, came up that little bit short again. Um, so uh, back to the drawing board. We'll go get them again uh, next time we come back here and hopefully next week. And Brad Keselowski, second place finish today. He now moves up to eighth in the points. He is a he is a uh, 11 points, excuse me, nine points uh, ahead of 10th. So uh, we'll take questions now for Brad. If you have them, take, uh, raise your hand. We'll start with Holly and then we'll get Lee and Reed. NASCAR.com, and you just alluded to this, Brad, but obviously wanting to get the win, but also knowing what kind of a good points day that was. Do, does the points day part of it even go through your mind, or is it just win for you, especially having had the it runner? In my mind, Holly. <laughs> you know, I'm, points are great when you're in the chase. Uh, before that, to me, it's, it's about wins. Uh, even if you don't end up in the top point, I'd rather be a wild card with you know four or five wins than be a uh, guy in the chase with zero wins. Um, so, you know, I guess I don't look at it that way. Uh, but, uh, you know, I could have definitely dumped Kyle uh, and won the race. Uh, that stuff goes back and forth. And I'm sure someone in the tabloid side of the media will make a big deal about that. Uh, but it won't be me because I know I did the right thing. Hang on a second, Brad. You switch mics and say that one's not working. Not working? No, I don't think it's getting audio on. This one okay? That was all I had for that question, Kerry. I don't know. Fine. We got it. We'll go to. Uh, did you need anything else, Holly? You good? I can't remember what I said. <laughs> Talk, okay, let's do that again. The uh, question was: the you, question was wins. Obviously, going for the win. Good points day. Your thoughts as far as wins and points? Yeah, I mean, wins aren't. Uh, wins are a priority to me, without a doubt. Uh, you know, when it comes to making the chase, I'd rather, like I said. Be a team that has uh, five or six wins and be a wild card or two or three wins, whatever that might be, than be a team that made the chase with zero wins. Uh, so uh, I guess that's the only way I can explain that. Uh, and I wasn't racing or running today thinking, boy, I need a great points day, uh, even though I definitely was cognizant of the fact that the five and the 24 and obviously the troubles with uh, with Tony. Uh, but I, I didn't enter this race thinking, let's run second or third. That'll be great. You know, that'd be a lot better than taking a risk of winning. Hell no, I wasn't thinking that. I want to win a race, and uh, that's where my heart's at. For 56 Napa Auto Parts Toyota from Michael Waltrip Racing. And uh, Martin, talk about this. Certainly you were up in a position to contend for the win. Uh, just talk about how things look from your vantage point. Well, all in all, it was a good day. Uh, you know, obviously we wanted to win this race. It, uh, it would have meant a lot to us, and we had a... We had a really fast car on, on newer tires. I think where we struggled the most was longer runs. You know, as the runs went on, the 18 would start getting away from us, and it felt like if we could have, we almost got the lead there that one that one restart when we when we had just pitted, caution come out, and we had fresh tires when we took off. Um, and I feel like if I just could have cleared them, got some of that clean air, I may it, it may have been, you know, a different outcome. I may have been able to take care of my tires a little better, but. You know, we ended up having a bunch of restarts, and uh, the, the air pressures got built up, and the cars started sliding around a lot. And, and I just didn't quite have the grip that uh, that Kyle had, or or even Brad on the longer runs. So, uh, you know, we were we were a third place car all day. Just just missed it a little bit, but uh, all in all, uh, a good day for us. And it's frustrating when you can just see the leader all day, and you're right there behind him, but you just can't do anything about it. So tough day, but a uh, good day all in all. Martin finishes out today's race tenth in the points. 
with one victory. Uh, he is two <laughs> points nine? ahead of 11. Yeah, Questions now for either Martin or Brad. Let's go to uh, Lee and then Reed. This gentleman over here. Go ahead, Lee. Lee Spencer, uh, FoxSports.com. Brad, you said uh, I didn't want to wreck him. I've had enough drama. Were you referring to last year's finish? Uh, no, just in general. I've had a career full of a lot of drama, Martin. You cause it all. <laughs> See, that's what everybody says. I feel like I'm innocent. Um, <laughs> I mean, some of the things you say and do, Yeah. what do you expect? I'm just having fun. You guys can call it drama. I call it having fun. but You, know, uh, you guys know he says half of the stuff he says just to get y'all fired <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm keeping back. them all employed. Have you not seen how hard it is to be a journalist nowadays? <laughs> yeah. People getting laid off and fired? You're welcome, America. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just, you know, in, in general, I mean, I don't know how you pick one period of drama. I mean, obviously, I spun out on my own. He missed that part, Martin. Seen it in my mirror. He did? Yeah, it was really smart of me. I was clapping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Golf clap? Yeah. Yeah, good job. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, and uh, I felt like, I guess to rewind, I felt like, and I don't think Kyle would agree with this, but that's his choice. I felt like last year was a racing deal. Uh, you know, he went off the track. Uh, I filled the hole and he came down. If I would have wrecked him today, in my mind, uh, it wouldn't have been a racing deal. It would have been just wrecking. And there's a huge difference. When somebody blocks you, that's different. When somebody <laughs> runs off the track, pulls down in front of you, that's racing deals. Those are all just racing deals. When you just run in the back of someone and drive them headfirst into the wall, that's bullshit racing. And I don't, I don't just don't like it. Ear must. Go ahead, Reed. Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Two, two questions. So, so are you saying that there wasn't any temptation at all? There wasn't the angel on one shoulder? Well, there's the always temptation, the yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're a married man. I'm sure you look through Maxim Magazine. <laughs> I mean, it's no different. Maybe something a little more vulgar than Maxim Magazine. But I'm just saying there's wow. always temptation. I know, but I'm just saying he probably has looked at a magazine with a girl and it looks really hot. It doesn't mean there's isn't temptation, but, you know, there's there's a level of respect and a code of honor that you have to have as a man. You do it. Okay. And second, um, after you spun, you and Paul were going back and forth a lot in terms of strategy, in terms of fuel only, yep. two tires, et cetera. But that all seemed to work out in the end. Could you talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, Paul just saved my butt after I tried to screw up the day, uh, you know. We've had some races where strategy has bit us in the butt royally, uh, and today was one of those days where we caught a good break. Uh, you know, that's just being quite frank about it. And unfortunately, we didn't capitalize on it, which is you know disappointing. Capitalize it in the sense of a win, uh, but this is uh, the first race in a long time where I could say we've caught a break. And I don't even feel like I need good breaks. I just don't want any bad breaks. Today we caught a good break, uh, and that's part of what put us in a position to win the race. Go over here, to the gentleman to the left, and then we'll go to Bob. And then to Stan. <clears throat> uh, Bob Benz from the Corning Leader. Brad, um, just talk about the level of frustration of just coming so close at this track three straight years. And, and, and do you just do you dwell on little things that you may have done you know, differently? To yeah, I mean, I move on pretty quick. Um, it would probably take me a day or so to move on. And then when I come back to this racetrack and everybody shows the reruns of the last few years, you kind of dwell on it again. But... Um, you know, I'll be over it by the time we get to, to next week's race in uh, in Michigan. Over here to uh, Bob and then to Stan. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Brad, does it hurt any more to lose to Kyle Busch? Well, I mean, he's good. It doesn't hurt more, no. Um, maybe if we were in the chase and there was one race to go and he was the points leader and I was running second, yeah, but just because he's Kyle Busch doesn't mean it hurts more. He's a, a great driver, and I have a lot of respect for him accordingly. Um I don't really hold any personal grudges against him to make it hurt anymore. Maybe it's, you know, that's not reciprocal. I don't know. You'd have to ask him, but um, not for me, no. Go ahead, Stan. Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. This is actually for both of you. What, if any, difference is there when you're at a road course like this and, and you can just see the leader and, and you're trying everything you can to grab him to take the lead and the win? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't feel it's that much different than an oval track. I mean, you know, you see the leader, you want to catch him and pass him. That's what we're here to do. So it's, uh, 
obviously the way you go about it's different and um you know it's it's easier i would say to to pressure the leader into making a mistake at a place like this than it is an oval you know just because of the breaking zones and you know you go five or six feet too far into turn one and you miss it you're going to get past her lead so it's you kind of approach it a little different than you do an oval i would say and i think brad would probably agree with me on that but uh you know at, at the end of the day it still is all about if you can see the leader you know, you're tasting it you want it you know you're doing everything you can to try to get the lead yeah, I stand. I would mostly agree with what Martin said. With you know, the only exception being a road course, it's a little easier to force a mistake and the driver ahead of you. So, I know Martin's really good at that, and Marcos and those guys are all really good at that. And, uh, so that changes some of your discipline to racing. Any additional questions? All the way in the back, gentleman in the uh, blue shirt. Uh, Rick Huey, Finger Lakes News Radio. Uh, the S's today were. Uh, uh, bone of contention in a lot of situations and you guys escaped them. Uh, Martin, I know earlier in your career here you had an incident there and we're on the bottom of the pile. Uh, some thoughts about the S's area. Uh, yeah, I mean it's, um, you know, that, that that's like the highest speed part of the track. It's, it's very blind, you know, especially when you get too wide and if you get in certain situations in traffic and you really can't tell where you're at, uh, but you got to stay in the gas or you're, you're going to get run over or passed by a bunch of guys so that's just a that place you know it's just a recipe for disaster it's really narrow it's really fast there's curbs on both sides I mean if you miss it by a couple inches you know you're gonna you're gonna be in a wreck so uh, it's a little bit easier when you're up front Brad and I were side by side a couple times through there me and Kyle went up through there side by side once but it's I mean it's telling you you're on pins and needles and you just you're just waiting for something bad to happen when you do it so uh, it's definitely a tough deal, and, and you know, you get back in the pack there. It's again, it, you get blinded. You get it's hard to see where those curves and things are at, and uh, that's what causes the wrecks up through there. Let's go to Kristen right here in the green. Kristen Bogosian, NASCAR.com. You guys both moved up four spots uh, this week after the race today. How do you feel about going into the tracks you have the next few weeks? You want to take this one? I'm sure, you did a great job with the last one. Um, how do I feel about the next? Is it four races left to the chase? Four races. Four races, and we're at uh, Michigan, Bristol, Atlanta, Richmond. Yes, sir. Uh, well, with the exception of Michigan, I would say I feel uh, very, very strongly about how we're going to finish out the race to the chase. Uh, we ran very strongly at Bristol uh, in the spring and have a great track record there. Uh, Atlanta, we just came off a tire test, uh, and that went very, very well. Uh, and then we have the uh, we have a team specific Richmond test coming up uh, uh, in a week and a half. Uh, so three out of the four, I'm um, expecting us to have great speed and a potential shot at winning. Michigan's been one of our weaker tracks. The the repaved style of track uh, uh, hasn't been one of my my favorites or go tos. But um, we're uh, we're very optimistic that we can at least get a solid finish like we did in the spring there. Uh, so I I really see no reason why we can't uh, sustain our position in the points, if not uh, improve it before the uh, chase starts. Uh, but more importantly, as I was explaining uh, to Howie, uh, I would rather have a win or two and be a wild card than finish seventh or eighth and squeak my way in without any wins because the momentum of a win and the confidence builder it instills in both yourself uh, and the fear that it puts in your competition is more than worth it. You want any me to more answer, questions? Jeff? Yeah. Bob, I got. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I. Uh, Martin, add to that, please. I feel I feel really good, honestly. Uh, you know, the last three weeks, I felt like if we could just get through those three weeks, you know, those three flat tracks, which we didn't set the world on fire by any means, we struggled, but we struggled to, uh, you know, to to 11th at, at Indy and, um, you know, 15th or something at Pocono, and and even though those were terrible results, they were good for us. So I feel really good from here on out. I'm a lot like Brad. Bristol's been really good for us. Uh, we've run well there. It, there is a lot of risk involved with that track because a lot of things can happen there. But uh, obviously looking forward to going to Atlanta. That's always been one of my better tracks, and we come close to winning there last year. Um, Michigan, I, th I think we ran really well there the first race this year. And, and so uh, I, I think we're in good shape. We just need to – you know, there's a lot of things that can happen in four races. We just need to keep doing what we've been doing and uh, and keep racing hard. It seems like this year every time we we got ourselves in a comfortable position in points – we had a, a really bad weekend, 
you know, out of our control, places like Daytona and, and engine problems and things that we've had throughout the year. So the points are uh, what they are. Uh, we're just going to go racing and try to uh, try to do what we know how to do. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Parker, Morning News. Brad, going into that last lap or during that last lap, where was the best place for you to possibly force him to make a mistake or, and or make the pass? Well, I don't know. Uh, really, all of the corners. Um, there wasn't one particular corner in specifically maybe that's why i didn't pass him is i didn't figure out one particular corner but uh i was just slightly better than him really through every section on the the last lap and just needed to be a little closer to really affect it when i got pretty damn close but um needed a little more time that close to him to really make a difference